Hey everyone, welcome back to the Rodcast. How you doing, Pastor Rod? Great, excited for this session. Let's go. So in this series, we're just talking about different things that are being spoken about in the world, um, things we're hearing in different in culture. Um, and so I want to break up a phrase that we've that that was spoken about a lot in the last few years, and it's it's okay to not be okay. Um, and this was again, very popular in both the church and the secular world. Um, there's even a very popular Korean drama on Netflix with that exact title. <laughs> um, so I guess the, the the big question is, is it okay to not be okay? Yeah, it, it is, but I think there's a, I think there's a better way. And so I'd probably say it's okay not to be okay, but let's keep believing that we're going to be okay. <laughs> um, now, when I say that, I, I need to be really careful. As a pastor, I can't demand someone's okay. Mm. I can't look at them and say, you have to be okay. That is that is not my intention here at all. But I just think that we've got to be preachers of hope. Now, hope means a godly expectation of a better future. Christian mm. hope, godly expectation that God can intervene in my situation, uh, an expectation that God can help me in my marriage. So, is it okay for my marriage not to be okay? It's okay. But there's there's a godly expectation that God can intervene and help. And I think that there needs to be a, a an after statement. It's okay mm. not to be okay. But what if what if you had a pathway to being okay? Mm. In other words, is there hope? And if mm. that statement, it's okay not to be okay, means that there's no hope, we're hopeless. Mm. I mm. think that can take a negative edge. I really do in, in areas mm. of, of mental health and relationships. And, you know, if, I, if, if, if my wife and I looked at each other and said, it's okay not to be okay uh, and went and looked at our marriage and left it there, I think that's not mm. okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we're in for a, a difficult moment in our marriage. Mm. Mm. But to say it's, it's, there's things not working, but let's talk and pray and believe and then there's hope and there's God's instruction to be okay. Hmm. Now, we can't demand everyone do what we say or, or think or do, but we can offer, I, I believe, a pathway to showing there's a way to be okay. We're not demanding it. We're not hmm. telling you you have to, but we want to present it. Would that be okay? I think that's called good news. Hmm. I really do. I believe it's called the good news of Jesus Christ that we say to people, you, you know, you can, you can, you can do what you want. You can, you can be who you want. Like that's fine. But could we talk about this wonderful intervention of Jesus mm. Christ? And I, I want to read a scripture that's really important. I think to this discussion, it's the the purpose of Jesus coming to the earth, and it's found in um, Luke chapter four. And this is a, a direct quote from uh, the Old Testament book of Isaiah, Isaiah sixty one. And, and Jesus picks up that script in a synagogue, in a, in a small meeting place in Galilee. He picks it up. It's, it's, it's actually handed to him. It's like, like a God moment. Someone mm. handed him and said, teach on this, Jesus. And he, well, he found it. It says he found the place. But verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is on me, Jesus said, because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. We come back to that one. That's, the, that's what I want to talk about, to proclaim liberty to the captives recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now listen to what he's saying. Jesus said, I've come to bring healing. I've come mm. to bring sight. I've come to heal the broken hearted. So the, 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 the purpose, a, a, a big part of the purpose of the cross and resurrection, well, number one, it's forgiveness for us and a way to heaven, definitely. A, a relationship with God, reconciliation, totally. But Jesus here himself reads this with passion and says, this is why, this, this is fulfilled in, in your sight, is what he said to them. So let's mm. pick up that line, I've come to heal the brokenhearted. And I would say here is an offer, an offer. It's okay to not be okay, but here's an offer. If you mm. would like it, if, if you would see it, if you could have hope in it, that God has a way through and out of that so I could say in the future, it's also okay to be okay. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and I think if, if, if it's okay to be okay is also a tagline why I, I, I don't have to be okay, but also you don't have to be okay. I think it's, 
I think it's lacking. I, I mm. think it's okay not to be okay, but there is a pathway. There is a way. There is there's hope. We're, mm. we're, we're preachers of hope, amen? We, Jesus says he is here to heal the broken hearted and liberty for the captives. I'm not slowing down to be basic. I'm, it's just really, let, let's resonate with these words to, to recovery of sight, to set at liberty the oppressed, to, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. In, in other words, right now, this is the moment. Mm. And this is fulfilled in your sight or in, in your hearing. And he, and he put the scroll away. And um, I, I love it. It's part of the reason I became a believer, Lewis. Uh, and I, I, It's right. part of the reason I've stayed a believer is because I've seen God heal me when I wasn't okay. And I've seen God heal many, many thousands of people when they weren't okay. Mm. And some are still not okay and God loves them just the same. But the offer is for all, for all who yeah. will hear. Big way of answering your first question, is it okay to mm. be not okay? Yes, it is, but let's bring hope into the equation with Jesus yeah. Christ. Come on. You, yeah, I was just thinking you could say it's okay to not be okay, but it's better to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and with Jesus, there's hope for that. That's what you're saying, yeah. isn't it? It is. And, and I, I've, I've been a, I am a father of two boys, which I love. I've loved being a father. Um and you know, there's been times when my little, my boys were little, and they they weren't okay. And as a father, that doesn't make me feel okay, mm. because I want to help now. Because I, yeah, you know, like when Monty, we came to Japan, and Monty was bullied in the school, and he came home and said what the bully said to him, and it was swearing, and it was it was really quite upsetting. And um, you know, I grabbed my boy, and I, Monty, I said, let's pray, and you know, Jesus, you brought us to Japan, and I pray you'd help Monty be strong in his heart. And in other mm. words, he wasn't okay. Mm. But my father's heart wanted to pray to God who could help him be okay in that situation. Mm. And thank God that that he took that and got stronger and went back to school. And he never like tried to face up the bully, but he, he stayed away from that trouble. Mm. I remember another time with Richie when he was little, probably about eight here in Japan. And there were earthquakes here, but not big ones. And um, mm. Richie woke up one morning in a panic attack. Now, this is he, – he doesn't do this today. So, this is like when he was eight, came out of his room, Dad, Dad, there's going to be an earthquake. There's going to be an earthquake. And he was panicking. Now, there was no earthquake wow. at that time and had not been for months. It was probably a dream or something just impressed in his heart. So, I grabbed him and said, Richie, let's pray to Jesus. And we prayed and – Lord, settle his heart. There's no earthquake right now and it's all okay. And Okay, amen. You okay, Richard? Yes. Next morning, mm. he comes out of the room, Dad, Dad there's going to be an earthquake. So, so the panic had come back the next day. And we prayed again and Jesus helped him. Third time, mm. same thing, came out. We prayed again, but that was the last day. It never happened again. Wow. And. And Richie's actually become almost fearless. <laughs> I said, maybe we prayed too much, you know. <laughs> when, when, he had his first, <laughs> when he had his first downhill uh, snowboard, he thought you just went straight down the hill. That was it. Like, <laughs> And he was good. And uh, first time on a snowboard, he just went straight. And so we're saying, fall over. We're yelling, fall over. Because he was picking up speed. Like he was just yeah. – and he looked back as though to go – why? And it would fall <laughs> over. So he finally fell over, not because we said to. Yeah. And we got down to him and he said, why did I have to fall over? And so he's, he's, he became fearless. And mm. and so it was okay for him. Not, we'd still love them, right? It's not a matter mm. of love. Mm. If, if, if Monty had a trouble with the bully and Richie had trouble with the earthquake, we'd still love them. This is not an yeah. issue of love. Mm. except that as a father's heart, I want to pray and I want to help and talk about how Jesus can help. Yeah. And I think the father heart in heaven would look at the children of God, the sons and daughters and say, I love you anyway. Yeah. Like it's okay not to be okay. And the love mm. is just as full. Yeah. Just as strong. But yeah. there's an offer yeah. of healing the brokenhearted. There is an offer mm. of healing. So I think if it's just stopped at that point, it's okay not to be okay. As, as, as teachers and preachers of Jesus, I don't think we've given the good news mm. that 
He loves you just the same, but there is a mm. pathway to health here and to present yeah. that in a pray. I love that. And I think that's love in its fullness of, like you said, the love. I actually have a similar story with my son, um, Jaden, who's actually just turned four today. And uh, he's a great kid. About, <laughs> he is a great kid <laughs> and uh, brings lots of joy to our home. And um, just a few months ago, he started having waking up in the night and being scared, having uh, bad dreams. He was waking yeah. up and, and coming and crying and upset and and started saying, you know, kind of the classic toddler, there's a monster in my wardrobe and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. and I was explaining to him, you know, like, you're, you're safe, Jaden. Your mommy and daddy are here and there's no mo- monsters aren't real. Look, there's no monster in your wardrobe and Jesus is with you. And if you ever need help, you just pray, Jesus help me. And I taught him how to pray, Jesus help me as a three-year-old, uh, almost a four-year-old. And he started doing it. And, um, and he said he stopped having bad dreams. Um, and we prayed together and he said, yeah, now daddy, I just pray Jesus help me. And I'm not scared anymore. Um, a little four year old, um, (laughs) (laughs) but I said, you know, when you truly love, when you have deep love for someone, you don't want to see them stuck in a place where they're not okay. You, you love them when they're there, Mm. but you have your love and you know, it forces you to want to help them to go beyond and get better. Yeah. It's such a good story. Uh, you know, I love Jaden, your boy. He's such a character <laughs> and um, he, that'll be defining. He'll remember that and um, mm. how, how daddy prayed with me, how Jesus helped me and, and mm. a four-year-old will remember. Maybe not the whole story but there'll be something there that's strong. Amen. And I think just, that's just the heart of God God the Father and Jesus mm. and Holy Spirit yep. is, is we love you. They're, they're saying we love you or I love you. Just the same, but there's a way forward mm. made for you through the cross and the resurrection mm. that we can help. And I think, you know, as, as spiritual leaders, we need to speak that. And, and you know, I, I remember a number of years ago I was in um, Australia and um, I come from a broken family. Uh, I won't go through the whole story, but my dad left when I was eight and didn't really pay attention to me, gave me no money. It was, we were very poor and blah, blah, blah. I was very upset. And... Um, At 19, I became a believer and I I forgave and I was healed. God healed me. Mm. I I told that story quickly because I want to get to this point that years later, I I say to all these young men who have daddy issues, I say, God can heal you. Mm. I know that because God healed me. And I came to one young guy and I said that and I say it with with compassion. But it's okay not to be okay, but there is a a way of healing here. That's what I'm saying Mm. to them. Mm. And he looked at me and said, you don't understand. You don't know what I've been through. And I said, you know what? There's a lot of things I don't know, but I know that. I, I know mm. there is a pathway through this one mm. and you can have it too. And I, I I challenged him in love. And actually that guy did find a place of healing and, and went really forward. But someone came back at me and said, no, no, basically saying, no, it's okay not to be okay. In the very mm. area that I was healed in, I was forced mm. to say, there is a way out of this. There yeah. is a way. So don't see the it's okay not to be okay as a prison. Mm, mm. It might be a moment of, 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 of staying there to be strong enough to move forward, yeah. Mm. But if it's my forever, mm. my forever life or my new identity, I think we're rejecting the way that Jesus has opened for us and, and to prayer and to the word of God. And I'm just a great believer in healing. I'm just a mm. great believer in inner healing. Totally, mm. totally believe in it, Lewis. I know you do too as pastors. We yeah. see it all the time that if I didn't believe that, I would not be a pastor. Mm. Um, again, let me say we're not demanding people get healed. We're yeah. offering there is a way forward. Yeah. And I think I just think about it this way. If, you know, if you're a doctor in a hospital and someone comes in with a broken arm, you know, you would offer to say, Hey, let's put a cast on it. Let's help you. Let's, let's, you yeah. know, and if they didn't want that, you'd be like, oh, you know, no worries. Yeah. Um, don't recommend it. But, you know, but to, to someone to come into hospital with a, a broken arm and to not even offer for the doctor, not even say, um, hey, there's a way we can heal that. There's a way we can make that better. Um, do you want that? It wouldn't be care. Um, and I think the same for as a pastor, people come to church as, yeah, you can be not okay and we'll love you and you can be in the church and, you know, there's no judgment, but to not say, hey, there's hope in Jesus um, is not being faithful to our call as pastors, I believe. Yeah. yeah. If I could just bring up a, a parallel issue I, I see, and, and um, 
it's this word broken. Mm. Um, it says here, Jesus heals the brokenhearted. I was one of them. You probably were one of them. Mm. So we believe totally in people being brokenhearted. We understand that. There, there are broken people and broken situations, and we feel compassion and we pray. However, there is another New Testament word that I think more accurately speaks of our condition now. Mm. And it's not the word broken, it's the word weak. And mm. I think it's really important. I, I know it's, we're talking about words here. People say, oh, this sounds the same. But if I have a broken toy, um, it's it's sort of beyond repair. It's, that's just almost the, like the picture of something broken is, is beyond repair. Mm. But weak or fatigued or human, fatigued in mm. my humanness, is not the same as mm. being broken. And I, I think we need to pull these apart because the New Testament word for Christians is weak. When mm. you know, It says, when I am weak, then I am strong, for his grace is made perfect in weakness. Mm. And I think that we need to change our thinking of going before God and saying, I'm so broken. I was broken. Totally mm. accept that. And, mm. and probably maybe there's some a few areas, but I'm not a, a broken son of God today. I'm just a mm. weak son of God. Mm. I, I think there's a difference. Because uh, if the devil tells me I'm, I'm broken and forever broken and, and God hasn't made me repaired yet, mm. I think it can lead to hopelessness, mm. which is an issue. Because when you're hopeless, you can't see a way forward. And that's where I, th- I really think we've got to speak. No, no, you're not broken. You're weak. Mm. Mm. Um, you know, Paul goes through in, in, the, in the Corinthians a whole bunch of stuff. He's been in shipwrecked and he's been without food and he's been without sleep and he's, I'm weak. Mm. We, that's called hu- being human, you know. Mm. All those things, we come in and we, I would say I'm feeling weak right now. I'm feeling fatigued is another word for weak. I'm feeling yeah. tired. I, I'm just hanging in there. They, these are fine words. Mm. But to say I'm broken brings in an aspect of, God hasn't healed me yet and maybe is unable. Mm. And I would like to say to people, I can't force people to be not broken, but I mm. can declare I believe in the healing power of Jesus. And I would go to a church mm. that preaches that. I would. Yeah. I would go to a church. If I'm feeling broken or weak, I want to go to a church and hear Jesus can yeah. heal, Jesus can restore. Just what we read in Luke 4, the reason yeah. the Son of God came was to take away the work of the devil and to bring healing and to bring goodness. I, I want to go to that church. Yeah. I, want to, I want to know there's hope. If my mm. marriage was in crisis, I don't want to go and hear about how we're, we're all broken. I want to hear how, yeah, there's difficulties, but God can heal your marriage. Yeah. God can heal your soul. God can heal your children, et cetera. I'm, I'm preaching now, but mm. I think I want to go to that church. Yeah. Doesn't demand I get healed today, but mm. is offering me um, the truth that Jesus can heal me. And it could yeah. ha- and it could happen today. It could. Yeah. It could be the moment where God does heal our marriage. Yeah, amazing. I remember when you first brought that teaching to um I think you taught the pastors um years ago now. Um and it really helped me because Actually, you know, I, I kind of have an opposite story from you. I was born in a very loving family um, with great parents that always loved, supported, provided. I had a very, very, you know, just an incredible upbringing. Um, yeah. Born in a country like New Zealand, um, never knew anything close to poverty or, you know, we weren't uber rich, we we're middle class, but, you know, never, 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 never knew the feeling of not knowing what where my next meal is going to come for, or uncertainty or... Um, and I'm very blessed, you know, that's the way God would want it for everyone, ideally. And, um, yeah. and you know, and, and then moved from New Zealand to, for New Zealand to Japan, also a great, great country um, with great opportunities. And, and I've never really um, been in a place where I've faced true tragedy. Um, and sadly, that's quite a unique story um, to say, you know, not saying that will never come, yeah. but until this point in my life, I've never faced a true, true tragedy or true crisis, big crisis. But so when people are saying, you know, this whole broken thing, I just, I couldn't relate to that. Um, but on the other hand, I'm like, I know I'm weak. I know I'm not perfect. I know I struggle yeah. with sin. I know I yeah. struggle with, you know, sure. double my, you know, wanting to do this, but also wanting to do this. And, and yeah. so when you brought that clarity, it really helped me to understand, mm. um, that's what it is. I'm not broken. Um, 
you know, God's God's protected me and healed me of anything that would have been brokenness. And but I'm not I'm not perfect, you know. I make mistakes, and it really helped me clarify and yeah. understand yeah. Um, life. Mm. Mm. I did a search in the New Testament for this word "broken," and mm. the majority of time it's used is when they broke bread, which sort right. of is irrelevant. But mm. there is that time Jesus said, "I will heal the brokenhearted." There's a mm. promise of healing for brokenness. Yeah. And the yep. only other time that I could find it was in 1 Corinthians 11 with the communion. Mm. Now, those of us who are believers, we love communion. We, 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 we eat the bread and remember the mm. body of Christ and the, the wine or the juice remembers the blood of Christ. And, and it says, yeah. see, Jesus said, well, this is Paul reporting about Jesus' words, quote from Jesus, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this mm. in remembrance of of me. This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. So mm. we remember Jesus broken on the cross. Now, mm. the Bible says not one of his bones were broken. He didn't have any broken bones, but his body was broken. It was it was mm. it was destroyed. And we remember his brokenness. And I believe this brings mm. us healing and communion by the way. I believe there's a healing component mm. Mm. Um, it says, by his stripes we are healed in Matthew 8, 17, I think it is. And so that, that through his suffering, there is actually something redemptive for us. Mm. You sort of think, well, why did he go through? Why couldn't he just like died? <laughs> yeah. Ter- mm. Terrible thought. But why, why, why couldn't just someone put a spear through him? He's, he's dead. He went through mm. this long crucifixion, mm. a beating, flogging all day. And put on the cross, and and it says, you sort of think, well, why why was that important? And it says, because of, through his stripes, through the beating, mm. we are healed. Mm. And I think we need to get this this revelation that he was broken. Yeah, he was broken. Do this in remembrance of me, the brokenness mm. of Jesus, but bringing healing to us. And that's the only other time I found the word broken, besides breaking mm. of bread. Right. So, but I see the word weakness everywhere. Jesus said to his disciples who, who fell asleep during prayer, couldn't you pray one, one hour? Why are you so weak? There's right. the humanness. Mm. That, that's, that's us. Mm. There, there, or, or Paul saying, I was, I was you know, in a shipwreck and this and that, and, and I'm weak, but he's, he's made perfect in my weakness. So the word weak is everywhere. Mm. So we're not saying we're superhuman beings and we're beyond pain. And we're be- no, we're not, we're not saying that. We're saying we're weak. Now, this is really important to me, again, as a father, because if my boys came into the room and said, Dad, I'm broken, I'd be really concerned. It would yeah. be a serious thing to hear my son say, and for you, all of a sudden, and you say, why Why are you broken? So, I just, I'm just broken, Dad. I'm broken before you. I thought, I'm broken mm. before this world. I'd be really concerned. Yeah. But when they came, came in after a, a sports game or a tough game or, or tough, tough day at school and say, Dad, I'm just feeling so fatigued. I'm feeling so tired. I say, yeah, yeah. me too, son. Let's go and get an ice cream. So, yeah. there is a real difference in these two words. Mm. Does that make sense, yeah. Lewis? As a totally. dad, I yeah. Yeah, 100%. I think as well as, you know, something being broken that's healed or fixed, it also doesn't mean it's perfect yet either. No. And we're saying, yeah, they, but – there can be significant healing in this lifetime. I said, you've experienced that the significant healing of I'm not broken anymore. There's still yeah. weaknesses. There's still, yeah. there's still some, some weak points. I'm not, I'm not perfect. Um, I think that's another misunderstanding of, you know, we're talking about, I think again, in people's minds that they, they're struggling with this thing and this, and, mm. and they maybe have experienced some great healing, but they're still, you know, they can't say I'm healed because there's a, there's this weaknesses. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can be healed of that brokenness. Uh, is the the hope mm. of Jesus, and that's yeah, that's suffering on the cross. That's why. That's great. Um, so wheeling back to our original point, is it okay for people to say uh, it's okay to not to be okay, or is it okay to be broken? My answer is it's it's okay to be anything. God loves you as you are. There's mm. no expectation yep. from me that you change or take these words. But I would say there's hope. Yeah. I think Amen. we've got to be preachers of that hope. Yeah. Not demanding, you know what I'm saying, not edgy and tough, not yeah. saying to people get over it, not not that, mm. but saying, hey, I hear your pain, but you know that Jesus heals the brokenhearted. That's a great yeah. scripture, isn't it? He yeah. heals the broken. Can we pray? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. And 
just I love that picture of in um, Japanese culture the thing called kintsugi, which is when oh. a bulb is dropped and it's broken, it's in pieces, and they put it back together and they use gold to mend it up, um, and it's fixed. And it's actually, you know, some people, it's actually a form of art. Some people find beauty in it, but it actually is, it's not perfect. It hasn't gone back to where it was, um, but it, it's strong. It's fixed, um, but it's still vulnerable. Yeah. It's still weak. It mm. could be dropped again. It could be damp, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that yeah. great picture well, of healing. Well, well, even to move forward from that, what you're saying, if we have something from the olden days and it's a plate that's complete, and then we have a plate mm. that has the gold, in in setting mm. i know which one's more valuable it's the one yeah. with the gold yeah because it's got the history and it's got it's a new yeah. art mm. and that's how god would see us as he heals us and say see my mm. beautiful sons and daughters yeah um they they they, they, were, they were broken yeah and they are weak but look look what's happened through yeah. through the cross so it's more yeah, valuable picture. yeah 100%. yeah yeah it's it's great great story what's it called mm. kintsugi Kintsugi, yeah. So people could actually look, Google that. Kin, T S, is it? T T. Yeah, it's K I N T S U G I. If you want to Google that, have a look. Beautiful art, yeah. Yeah, great picture of healing. Um, That's me. I got cracked. (laughs) I got. I got things. I'm weak. Yeah. But I thank Jesus that He's healed me. And yeah. I think if, if, you know, if God hadn't healed me, I, I just hate to think of what I'd be like, you know, like as a, mm. I'm not trying to bring judgment on people, but I, I have a passion for healing. Mm. I have a passion to be healed. And I would just ask anyone listening to say, don't give up. There's mm. healing. The, yeah. He wants to heal the brokenhearted. That, that's, that's the heart. There's power. Mm. And, and I just also say through he, reading his word, through what we call journaling, just reading and saying, Jesus, can you heal me? Jesus, can you touch me? Jesus, could you do that? Mm. Just that applied reading. Mm. I, I think we've seen more people healed than in any other place. It's just Bible reading and, and seeing mm. God heal people from all sorts of backgrounds and all sorts of pain. Mm. You know, I, 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 oh, I don't know if I'd share this story, but I guess I'm going to. Um, <laughs> a young lady in our church came up to me as the senior pastor and said, Pastor Rod, I, I'm now 20. And when I was 16, I had an abortion. And I, I felt such shame and it's, it's mm. just terrible. I, I, and, 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 but the, she said in prayer or in the word of God, I, God spoke to me and said to me the, the name, mm. you are forgiven and you are released and you're healed. She said, I heard that, that voice of God within me. And she said, Pastor Rod, I've been set free from that that experience, that pain. Wow. Now, I share that story. Um, and I, by the way, I said to her, let's go and talk to a lady leader right now. Like, I, I'm not going to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it just was sprung on me. Just, just mm. And, I, I, you know, so people prayed with her. But, you know, God had already healed her broken heart. Now, it's a tough area. But we are going to meet mm. people with all sorts of stuff, and we yeah. need to say to them, there is a place where God can heal your broken heart. Mm. I'd love to finish this today by saying, you know, it's not okay. It's okay to be not okay, but God can heal any yeah. broken heart. Amen. Great thought to finish on, and with that in mind, love it if you could pray for us. Yeah, Lord, thank you, Jesus, that you you died and you broke your body was broken. You you shed your blood. And we remember, we remember, and you rose again with power, never to be hurt again, Jesus. You're the King of Kings. And I pray that that power of the cross and the resurrection would be real in our lives as we remember. And that you would offer a place of sanctuary, of, 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 of shelter, and then a place of healing. That it is okay not to be okay with you and your love and your grace, but there is healing. Mm. There is a place. There's a way forward in your spirit and your word. We can help people to move forward and to find that you heal the brokenhearted in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you so much for joining us today. And if you enjoyed today's episode with Pastor Rod, why don't you subscribe on whatever platform you are listening to this, and we'll see you next time.